Hey everybody, let's get right into some viewer questions. Over on the animal husbandry duck video, uh, Dave Pruitt asked, what do you do with the eggs that do not hatch when you clean out the nursery? I wouldn't think they are edible anymore, but I may be wrong. Well, you're absolutely right that they're not edible anymore. Uh, at least we're certainly not uh, venturous enough to try them. What we've observed is First off, you're going to have some eggs that developed uh, a duck but did not hatch the duck. Uh, either the, the shell wasn't in the right condition, the right humidity, the right moisture content, and, and all that that has to take place for the duck to be able to actually peck through so the duck never actually hatches and it ends up dying inside the egg. The other possibility is that the egg was infertile in the first place. Now, mom ducks mostly seem to push those out of the way. Uh, but we did venture once to go ahead and crack an egg open and what we found was what was akin to scrambled egg inside of the egg. Now that means it got cooked sitting other, under the, the hot mother. Um, I can't presume that that's any good to eat. What do we do with it? We feed it to the pigs one way or the other. Uh, Garden Novice asked, will you be doing one on how y'all butcher? And similarly, uh, Mushroom Patch said, would not mind seeing the butchering process. Uh, folks, you'll never see a butchering video on j, j Acres. I take a lot of pleasure from making videos, and I like that certain videos become a, uh, a front runner, a flagship, if you like, for the channel. And I never know which one that's going to be. Uh, right now the top three videos I would never have guessed would be our top three videos. That said, I take absolutely no pleasure from butchering animals. Uh, I'm very much a meat eater and I don't plan on changing that despite how I feel about the butchering process. Uh, but basically the easiest way to explain it is I want my videos to always be something I have pleasure about. I always like watching them myself and seeing why are people watching this video? Why is this one doing better than others? And I don't want a butchering video on my channel. Nothing against it for other people, it's just not something that I personally am comfortable with. That said, at the end of this season, we're going to have about 100 ducks that have to be butchered. And I, will, I am thinking that the only way we're gonna get through that is for me to hold a class here on the farm bring people in, teach them how to do the butchering, and give everybody a role to do in the butchering process so that we can knock out that many birds in a day. So, if that's something that you're interested in and you happen to live in the nearby area where you can make that day trip, then keep an eye out for it. I imagine somewhere in the August, September time frame, we're gonna be looking to butcher a ton of ducks. Over on the Alderman Farms permaculture site design video, uh, Lori Hamilton asks, what is permaculture all about? Well, Lori, that's exceedingly difficult to try to answer in a quick video. I'm gonna give you a one sentence liner here, but it's not gonna be all encompassing. To me, permaculture is about recognizing the ecosystem that already exists in the world and figuring out how we as humans can be a part of that ecosystem and not be a, uh, a user or just an abuser of that system. How to actually integrate humanity into the ecosystem that's working all on its own. There's a whole lot that goes behind that, but that to me is what permaculture is all about. How do we go about uh, accomplishing that goal? Suffice to say, there's a lot of study and a lot of thinking that goes into it before we take any kind of actions. What we don't want to do in permaculture is what humankind has worked towards, which is just the idea of, well, that's a good idea, let's do this. It's quick, it's easy, it gets us a result fast. That's not what we're looking for. Mother Nature's a long-term, sustainable ecosystem. We need to think about that and how we can make sure that our impact on that ecosystem is also sustainable and long-term. I've got a lot of videos and uh, even a few podcasts and um, blog posts over on permasapien.com as well as here on j, j Acres, if you want to look them up, maybe that'll help answer your question a little bit more. Over on the uh, beehive inspection video, uh, Nathan asks, good stuff, how is your hive doing now? Well, the hive is doing fair to middling. Uh, it really depends on how you look at it. 
Uh, on one hand, you might say, well, our hive is currently honey bound. Uh, on the other hand, you might say, well, it's uh, the hot of summer and the queen's not trying to lay as many eggs anyway. So here's where we are with it. We have a ton of honey in the hive, uh, in the in the deeps, in the actual hive body, as well as in the super. And the problem that we're running into is we don't have any extraction equipment. Uh, I know there's a lot of ways that you can extract that honey without the fancy equipment, but we have friends in the area that have the fancy equipment. We just have to work around their schedules. So we're waiting for a friend to come over to help us extract the honey so we can get some frames back in there so that the queen can lay eggs when and if she wants to lay eggs uh, or as many as she needs to lay right now. So we still have the one hive that you've seen in the previous videos in the, in the white body. It has two deeps and one super on it uh, and it's doing pretty well. And to hear the Meridian Bee Association president tell it, we're one of the few people in the area that are actually producing honey. Uh, so I don't know if that's because we've been good stewards of the land and we're making sure they have a lot of resources to use and a lot of variety or because we didn't steal honey from them earlier in the spring. I'm not sure what the reason is, but ours are producing and we're pretty happy with it and they look good and healthy. Uh, last time we inspected it, even though we were concerned about that it might be honey bound, uh, no sign of pests uh, whatsoever. So we're pretty happy about that. And that brings us to the trial of MI Gardener's Trifecta Plus Fertilizer. Boy, <laughs> a couple of you chewed me a new one on that. Uh, folks, I guess I wasn't as sarcastic as I thought I was in that video. Uh, I was just doing a fun little test. Uh, it might not surprise you to know that people send me free stuff on a regular basis. It's certainly not like a, an every week sort of thing. But every once in a while, people send me seeds. Uh, I've received seeds from all around the world. I've received mushroom spores. I've received these uh, interesting little rubber caps to go on the top of uh, drink bottles, uh, like glass bottles, uh, so that you can juice and cap your own stuff. And a guy from Finland sent me these little rubber caps that he, uh, I don't think he claimed to invent it. I think he kind of revitalized it. It was something he remembered his, uh, his kin doing in the past, and he wanted to get it back out there that we haven't had any time to do anything with yet. Truthfully, I'm waiting for the muscadines on that one. I need my muscadines to get ready to juice before I have any juice that I need to put up. But anyway, the point of the thing is, I get products and things that people would like to see me use or that they just wanna donate over to J&J Acres, whether we use them on a video or not. Now, it just so happens uh, that Luke and I have talked on the side before. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, in the video, I thought I did a good job of being sarcastic about how unscientific this test was. Folks, I realize that if you want to grade a fertilizer, you need to compare it against other fertilizers. Uh, and especially if the fertilizer claims to be organic, other organic fertilizers. But that's not my goal. My goal is just to use the fertilizer and see if it does any darn difference at all. Plain and simple. And some people are saying, well, of course it's gonna do better. That's just old dirt that hasn't been used. I'm not so sure. I wanna see it for myself. I've never tried that. Uh, I've never tried just seeing whether or not the fertilizer does any darn different or if my soil's perfectly fine the way it is. So we're gonna give that a shot and see how it goes. And if that's unscientific, well, <laughs> that's what I said it was going to be. Let me give you guys a tip. If you want science, and gardening on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to uh, Stephen over at the Alberta Urban Garden or Patrick at One Yard Revolution, then those are the guys you need to go subscribe to for the science. These two guys are really good at what they're doing. They're very smart and I trust their results and their videos implicitly. I believe that they're out there doing the science behind gardening, testing the wives' tales, testing the folklore, testing general knowledge and seeing whether or not it has any basis in science and reality. And I would go to them if you're looking for the scientific results. If you just want to see some guy that somebody sent him a bag of fertilizer and said, hey, will you try my stuff? Then you're here because <laughs> that's all I'm doing. And to prove that, you know, there, there was one guy uh, who kind of irked me a little bit. And in his comment, one part he said was, this looks fixed. Folks, I'm a pretty down-to-earth guy, and many of you have commented before that that's kind of the reason you're here. I'm just the, I'm just the guy next door, uh, and you like seeing what we're doing here with the family and with the farm. 
And there's probably three things that would actually get me riled up. Everything else is just waters off a duck's back to me. Uh, insulting my wife, uh, endangering my children, or questioning my integrity uh, are pretty much the three things that are going to get me all defensive inside. And uh, in my opinion, this guy uh, attacked my integrity. So, uh, for your review, here is the conversation between me and Luke over on Facebook. Uh, we were previously discussing this guarding giveaway that he was doing where he asked if I'd mention it so he could get more people to uh, enlist or to enroll rather in that giveaway so he had more people to select from to do that garden design giveaway. And then we talked about his fertilizer and at the end of that conversation I asked him how that giveaway went and how the garden was and confessed that I haven't been a very good gardener myself this year. I just haven't planted very much and what I have planted is kind of gone to the wild. That's it. There it is. There's my integrity on open record for you. The guy contacted me and said, hey, will you try it if I send it to you? I said, sure, why not? There you go. If that's fixed, then I don't know what to tell you. Folks, I appreciate that you take the time to watch the videos. Uh, I hope that I've answered some of your questions here today. And as always, we'll see you next time.